Welcome to session 11 of our 13 sessions on Hebrew poetry and psalms. I'm David. Raga will be translating and will continue presenting the curriculum developed and originally presented by Phil Leach, who's with Youth with a Mission through the King's Lodge in Warwickshire, England. أنا ديفيد وربا هكون بترجم لي وهنكون بنكمل نقدم لكم المادة العلمية اللي قدمها في الديج اللي هو مع شغال مع شباب له رسالة في إنجلترا في في الكينجز هاج. Already looked at psalms of lament. إحنا بصينا من المحاضرة اللي فاتت عن مزامير الرساء. What we'd like to do in this section is look at a particular category of psalms of lament. لكن النهاردة هنركز على جزء من مزامير الرساء. These are known technically as imprecatory psalms. These are what we could also call cursing psalms. Where the psalmist is praying judgment and destruction down upon his enemies. This, of course, gives some people real trouble. وساعات الناس بتبص على المزامير دي وبتحس ان في حاجة مش مظبوطة. Because doesn't Jesus say we should love our enemies? مش يسوع قال لنا ان احنا يجب ان احنا نحب اعدائنا. And do good to those who are evil to us. ونكون بنظهر معاملة حسنة مع كل الناس حتى اللي هما بيعاملونا بطريقة وحشة. So why are godly people writing psalms such as these? طب ليه اناس اتقياء بيكتبوا مزامير زي المزامير دي؟ and praying prayers such as these. They're praying destruction and devastation upon their enemies. Now, there are a number of examples of imprecatory psalms. There's a few examples here that you can explore. Psalms 35, 58, 59, 69, 83, 94, 109, and 137. Mazmur 35, 58, 59, 59, What we'd like to do here is just look at a couple as examples. And discuss this whole dimension of imprecatory psalms. ونشرح إيه هي المزامير ديت وإيه الهدف منها. So let's take Psalm 58 for example. أول حاجة خلينا نبص على مزمور 58. It's a good example. وهو نموذج كويس. Because it talks about the wicked. أنا بتكلم عن الأشرار. Who are being cruel and perpetrating massive injustice. إن هما كانوا بيعملوا شر عظيم وكانوا بيسببوا ظلم قوي جدا. In fact, this psalm is set up a bit like a law court. والمزمور ده عامل زي كأن الناس قاعدة في المحكمة. So starting with verse 3. أول حاجة عدد الثلاثة. The wicked go astray from the womb. زاغ الأشرار من الرحم. They err from their birth speaking lies. ضلوا من البطن متكلمين كذبا. They have venom like the venom of a serpent. لهم حمى مثل حمى الحية. Like the deaf adder that stops its ear. مثل الصل الأصم يسد أذنه. So that it does not hear the voice of charmers or of the cunning enchanter. And then we get the imprecatory part of the psalm. Oh God, break the teeth in their mouths. Tear up the fangs of the young lions, O Lord. So very powerful imagery here. Let them vanish like water that runs away. Like grass, let them be trodden down and wither. Let them be like the snail that dissolves into slime. Like the untimely birth that never sees the sun. Really powerful imagery. Do to them as you did to Midian. As to Sisera and Jabin at the river Kishon. Who were destroyed at Endor. Who became dung for the ground. 
make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb. All their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna. Who said, let us take possession for ourselves of the pastures of God. Again, notice the really powerful imagery. The metaphors and similes in this particular song. Oh my God, make them like whirling dust. Like chaff before the wind. As fire consumes the forest. As the flame sets the mountains ablaze. So may you pursue them with your tempest. And terrify them with your hurricane. And just as a note, when he appeals, do to them just as you did to Midian. Sisera and Jabin were the army captains of Midian. And these are who Deborah defeated in Judges 4. Oreb and Zeb and Zeba and Zalmunna were defeated by Gideon in Judges 7 and 8. So these are forerunners of the psalmist's prayer for the defeat of the wicked here. Another imprecatory psalm, and perhaps the most well-known, is Psalm 137. Let's look at verses 7 through 9. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites the day of Jerusalem, how they said, Lay it bare, lay it bare, down to its foundations. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to be destroyed, blessed shall be he who repays you with what you have done to us. Blessed shall be he who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Verse 9 is one of those imprecatory verses that so many people find offensive. How can you speak of dashing little ones against the rock? How could that be a prayer recorded in the Psalms? Okay, firstly, let's have some considerations for the backgrounds of these Psalms. We need to remember that these Psalms are a response of people in very very difficult or extremely dangerous situations. And this is why understanding the background to a psalm can be important. The psalms are occasional, they're not abstract. Someone didn't just sit down at one point in time and is cursing people. Just because they have a mean spirit and a violent nature. Rather, these prayers were prayed out of people experiencing incredible injustice. Terrible, terrible oppression. And people at times being in incredible danger for their lives. And having already just experienced significant loss. 
وهم بس وكمان يعني كانوا لسه يا دوب معديين بموقف زي فقدان حد عزيز عليهم او حاجه صعبه جدا عزيز عليهم. King David for example before he was king being on the run from Saul who was absolutely committed to killing him. والحقيقة إنه داود كان واحد من الكتاب اللي المدنيين وكان قبل ما يبقى ملك كان تحت تهديد شديد من الملك شاول وكان بيهرب منه إن الملك شاول كان عايز يقتله. And so we need to realize these psalms are occasional. فاحنا محتاجين ندرك ونفهم إنه المزامير دي كتبت في ظروف معينة خاصة. They come out of situations of incredible pain and heartache. وكانت نتيجة مواقف مليانة بالألم وانكسار الألم. Let's have an example from Psalm 137. Remember, O Lord, against the Edomites, the day of Jerusalem. How they said, lay it bare, lay it bare, down to its foundations. And so here's a prayer against the Edomites. History tells us they were siding with the Babylonians when the Babylonians were destroying Judah. الحقيقة التاريخ كان بيقول لنا إنه هم كانوا واقفين جنب البابليين كانوا بيساعدوا البابليين لما كانوا بيدمروا أورشليم. And then this declaration against Babylon. وهنا في إعلان ضد بابل. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to be destroyed. يا بنت بابل المقربة. Blessed shall be the one who repays you with what you have done to us. طوبى لمن يجازيك جزاءك الذي جازيتنا. Blessed shall be he who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. And we can see the setting for Psalm 137 in quite a bit of detail from Kings, Chronicles, and particularly Lamentations. The five chapters of Lamentations were written after the destruction of Jerusalem and Judea in 586 B.C. الأصفار اللي هي الخمس الأصحاحات الخمسة الموجودة في سفر المراسي اتكتب بعد دمار أورشليم اللي حصل سنة 586 قبل الميلاد. You can see through the images the terrible horrendous things happening when Babylon destroyed Jerusalem. بنشوف في السفر دوت ونشوف صور كثيرة ازاي كان في دمار شديد جدا لأورشليم وازاي بابل كانت عملت زي حاجات بشعة ضد الشعب الشعب الإسرائيلي في الوقت The events of that time were for many of us today a period of unimaginable violence. يعني اللي حصل في الوقت ده كان بالنسبة لنا إحنا زي حاجة ما ينفعش نتخيلها يعني خراب لا يمكن تصوره. Cruelty from a victorious army has been the same all the way through history. والحقيقة كل معظم الجيوش اللي بتنتصر أو تدخل معاك وتنتصر كانت بتتصرف بنفس الطريقة. Really, really awful. كانوا بيتصرفوا بطريقة بشعة جدا. Today in many nations of the world we have the Geneva Convention. هنا عندنا في في الوقت الحالي دوت في كتير من الدول بنلاقي زي في this was an agreement across a number of nations. It was written by Christians to make a separation between combatant soldiers and civilians. This is trying to say, as a village of everyday people, we're protected. Of course, none of this was around for most of history. And if you were defeated, the army would come in and would commit atrocities beyond what we can imagine. فإذا شعبك أو جيشك اتهزم فبيتوقع إنه الشعب المنتصر أو الجيش المنتصر بيدخل الأرض وبيدمر وبيخرب وبيقتل وبيعمل حاجات صعبة جدا. This was just normal in ancient warfare. وده كان شيء يعني معروف في زمان في الحروب القديمة. And so this response, this psalm, was a prayer written out of an anguish. وبالتالي المزامير اللي كتبت دي كانت بت 
بتتكتب نتيجة الألم والحزن الشديد اللي كان بيحصل نتيجة الهجمات دي. A brokenness, a, a bitterness of soul from the awful things people had experienced. ونتيجة الكسور والنفس المتمررة بسبب المشاكل اللي حصلت والاختبارات اللي هم عدوا بيها. The nation had been completely destroyed. بنشوف إنه الأمة الأمة شعب إسرائيل دمار بالكامل. Thousands had been slaughtered. وألاف اتذبحوا. And not just killed in battle, but executed. مش اتقتلوا في الحرب لكن هم اتعدموا يعني اتقتلوا بعد الحرب كمان. As we've mentioned, the nation of Edom had been involved in the ransacking. وإحنا ذكرنا إنه شعب أدوم اشتركوا. في ال في النهب والسلب اللي حصل بعد الحرب. The looting. وال والسلب. And the violence on the defeated people of Israel of Judah. واستمرار العنف ضد شعب إسرائيل. Most of those who had not been killed had been marched into captivity. ومعظم الناس اللي ما تأثروش في الأحداث دي اتخذوا في السبي. It would seem that this is where Psalm 137 was written. والحقيقة ده اللي حصل اللي هو الخلفية اللي كتب منها مزمور 137. From a place of captivity in Babylon. من اتكتب من المكان السابي في بابل. Now what we need to realize is that even as these psalms were written out of the bitterness of the people's experience. إحنا محتاجين نعرف إنه رغم إن المزامير دي اتكتبت نتيجة الألم والمرارة اللي كان الناس بيعدوا بيها والشعب بيعدوا بيه. Or their needing of protection from danger. ونتيجة احتياجهم للحماية من الخطر. What's actually happening is the people are crying out to God for penalties. والحقيقة إنه اللي كان بيحصل هما بيكتبوا مزامير هما كان أصدين يطلبوا من رب ويصرخوا إيه من أجل العدالة. Judicial penalties, in other words, judgments to be applied to the guilty. زي إنه الله يقيم عقاب عقوبات قضائية على المزنجين. They're praying for justice to be done. ويطلبوا من الله إنه يتم العدالة. They're asking for punishments that correspond to the crime. وكانوا بيطلبوا عقوبات تتناسب مع الجريمة المرتكبة. We could say an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. زي عين بعين وسن بسن. They were asking for justice that was equal to the atrocities or the bad things that had happened. عايزين زي عدالة تتناسب مع الظلم الواقع والمشاكل اللي حصلت. Of course, this was how punishment worked in the ancient world. وده كان العقاب اللي بيحصل في العالم القديم. And what it is, these people are often asking God to fulfill prophetic oracles already issued. والحقيقة إن الناس كانت في المزامير بتطلب من الله إنه يحقق النبوات اللي كانت موجودة بالفعل. If you have a moment, read Obadiah. لو عندك وقت بص على سفر Obadiah. It's the shortest book in the Old Testament. هو أقصر يمكن سفر في العهد القديم. And it's a prophetic utterance regarding Edom. وهو بيتكلم عن نبوة بتتعلق من بتتعلق بشعب أدوم. Obadiah lists the atrocities that Edom had committed. Obadiah شاف وكتب الحاجات البشعة اللي عملها شعب أدوم. But it also describes the judgments this nation would receive. لكن هو كان بيوصف العقوبات والجنونة اللي هتحصل للشعب ده. Especially because of the historic relationship Edom had with Israel. خاصة مع الخلفية في التاريخية اللي كانت ليها علاقة ب بالعلاقة بين أدوم وشعب إسرائيل. Going way back, Jacob and Esau were brothers. لو رجعنا ورا خالص هنلاقي إن يعقوب وعيسو كانوا إخوات. And it's where each of these nations came from. والحقيقة هو ده مصدر الأمتين دول. أدوم جاي من عيسو. Israel from Jacob. إسرائيل من يعقوب. And Edom from Esau. وأدوم جاي من عيسو. Likewise, when it comes to Psalm 137 and the references to Babylon, we see Babylon being spoken against by the prophet Isaiah. And judgments being issued on Babylon. Let's look particularly at verse 16. خلينا نبص على عدد 16 في أشياء ثلاثة. Verse 15 reads. عدد 15 بيقول. Whoever is found will be thrust through. كل من نوجد يطعم. 
and whoever is caught will fall by the sword. وكل من الحاشي يسقط بالسيف. And then speaking of Babylon, وبعد كده بيتكلم عن بابل بشكل خاص. Their infants will be dashed to pieces before their eyes. وتحطم أطفالهم أمام عيونهم. Their houses will be plundered. وتنهب بيوتهم. And their wives ravished. وتفضح نساؤهم. Again, let us say this was normal practice for so much of history when the invading army is victorious on the defeated people. والحقيقة ده كان الشيء الطبيعي اللي بيحصل لما الجيش منتصر يهزم جيش تاني ويدخل أرضه. And so this is a prayer that the judgment on Babylon would happen. وده كأنه صلاة طلب فيها إنه دينونا الله تتحقق على أرض على مملكة بيت. So the question about these psalms and about us is how do we respond to injustice? فالسؤال اللي بيطرح نفسه في المزامير أو على حياتنا إحنا الشخصية إزاي نتجاوب مع الظلم؟ Probably few of us who have experienced anything like the injustice experienced by the authors of these psalms. أظن إن قليلين مننا هما اللي ممكن يكونوا عدوا بمواقف زي some of you listening to this may have experienced this kind of injustice. And we absolutely want to acknowledge that. But how do we respond to injustice? Well, one option is seeking personal revenge, of course. And growing in bitterness as we think of that. Or trying to suppress or deny feelings that we have of injustice, hurt, or anger. Surely the best way is recognizing the awfulness of the things that happen to people. لكن حقيقة أفضل طريقة نحن نتعامل بيها مع الظلم هو إن إحنا نخرج المشاعر دي اللي جوانا قدام الله. And the awfulness of things that have happened to us. والحاجات ونخرج الحاجات الشريرة اللي حصلت لينا الناس عملوها لينا. Then take all of those feelings to God. ونخرج كل المشاعر دي كلها وناخدها قدام الله. Pouring out our hearts to Him. ونسكب قلوبنا قدامه. And expressing what we feel with honesty and integrity. ونعبر عن اللي إحنا بحسينه. We honestly express that pain, anger, fear, loss. The sense of injustice. And the desire for retribution. But we express it to God. We're pouring out that sense of injustice and the desire for retribution all of us have for justice to be served. Praying to God is what these psalmists are doing. Surely this is the best way to handle such awful situations. Without trying to deny them, pretending they never happened, or letting them consume us, which may lead us to take matters into our own hands, which will ultimately make things even worse. In other words, these psalms teach us to let God be the judge. And through such prayer, we're releasing judgment to Him. Our situations may not be as extreme as the ones in some of these psalms. Nonetheless, when we have been sinned against, لكن إحنا برضو أكيد أسيء إلينا. And there's an injustice we feel it very intensely. وبنحس بظلم جديد حصل لنا. Surely the best way to respond is to be in prayer. وعشان كده أفضل طريقة إن إحنا نتجاوب بها الظلم ده إن إحنا نصلي. Trusting God to be the one who takes care of such things. ونصف إنه الرب هو اللي هيحل كل المشاكل هو اللي هيقضي لنا. Romans 12:9 says, "Beloved, never avenge yourselves." 
رمية 12 19 بيقول كده لا تنتقموا لانفسكم ايها الاحباء but leave room for the wrath of god بل اعطوا مكانا للغضب وملؤوا بها اعطوا مكانا لغضب الله for it is written vengeance is mine لان مكتوب لي النقمه انا اجازي يقول الرب i will repay says the lord انا اجازي يقول الرب god is the judge الله هو القاضي he is the one who will ultimately take care of such things هو في النهايه اللي بيتصرف في الامور دي god knows everything الله يعلم كل شيء and these songs are a way of faith والمزامير دي عبارة عن طرق للإيمان. Saying God, I trust you with this situation. وبيها بقول يا رب أنا بثق فيك بحط الموقف ده بإيديك. You are the judge. أنت القاضي. You take care of it. أنت اللي تهتم بالأمر ده. At the same time, it brings release and relief in letting these things go. وفي نفس الوقت بيبقى جوانا ارتياح وكأننا بنترك الأمور دي ونسيب التفكير فيها. Putting them in the hands of God. ونحطها في إيد الرب. Thank you for investing your time to learn about imprecatory psalms. شكرا عشان قضيت وقت تسمع معانا عن مزامير طلب الانتقام من الاعداء. Please join us next time for session 12. من فضلك تعالى اسمع معانا المحاضرة الجاية رقم 12. When we take a look at psalms of praise and thanksgiving. واللي بنتكلم فيه بنتكلم فيه عن مزامير التسبيح والشكر.